Good day Grade 10. In this lesson we're going to be learning about safety in travel. So let's look at this little video that explains to us why it's important to keep a safe braking distance. Now it's time to find out how you can drive for life. Thanks to Murcott's Driving Excellence, Australia's leading driver training organisation. Most people sit on 65 k's in a 60 zone. So let's take a look and see how long it really takes to stop a car at 65 kilometres an hour. This next car we're wiping 5k off and stopping at 60 k's. the difference. We've just seen how long it takes to stop a car in a pre-prepared emergency at 65 k's, around about 20 metres. By wiping 5 k off, our stopping distance has lessened by about 5 metres. There's a great tip in itself. However, in the real world, there's a thing called perception reaction time. That time is 1.3 seconds. Let me show you that distance, the extra distance it takes us to stop a car with perception reaction time at a speed of 65 k's. Come and join me. Isn't this an amazing distance? In the real world, it can take us 44 metres to stop a car just at 65 k's. Yet all day, every day, I see people tailgating, even at 110 kilometres an hour, sitting five metres from the back of the car in front. It's just not on. And if you still think that tailgating's okay, have a look at this. We've got three brand new Nissan Maximus, one lead car, one car following at 65 k's with a one second gap. The third car following has a two second gap, which I think is a good thing. Okay, it's an emergency situation, front car slams on the brakes. The second car with the one second gap just can't stop in time. But the third car with the two second gap safely stops. That's got to be a good thing. Don't tailgate keep a two second gap. Right, so you can see that you have to keep a two second gap because of what he called perception reaction time, which we in normal people call just a reaction time or thinking time. So let's look at an example and we will see how this makes a difference to our calculations. So it says a car is traveling at a constant velocity of 10 meters per second. So it's traveling at a constant velocity of 10 meters per second. When the driver sees a child 50 meters in front of him, his reaction time to hit the brakes is 0.5 seconds. He then hits the brakes to stop the car. The car accelerates at negative 1.5 meters per second squared. Will the car hit the child? So remember what we said, the first thing we do is we always draw a little picture. Even if we're a terrible artist, we draw a picture. So here is our car, which is a little box. It is traveling at a constant velocity. So our VI is 10 meters per second, 10 meters per second. There is a child and he sees the child, which is 50 meters away from him, 50 meters. But his reaction time is 0.5 seconds. So it takes 0.5 seconds, 0.5 seconds before he hits the brakes. The car then accelerates at a negative 1.5 meters per second squared. And they wanna know, will he hit the car? So the first thing we need to do, step one, we need to know how far he traveled, how far he traveled, during his thinking time, during his thinking time. And during his thinking time or his reaction time, 
his thinking time. And during his reaction thinking time, he's not changing his velocity. So we know the velocity is change in displacement over change in time. Remember I said to you the only time you can use this equation when we're going at a constant velocity, which we're doing now. So therefore delta x is equal to v delta t. So therefore we've got that he has his velocity is 10 sorry yes 10 and the time is 0 0.5 which means he's already traveled 5 meters during his reaction time now and I'm changing color so you can see which part of the react question I'm doing now we need to know when he starts breaking, we want to know how much distance does he have. He's already used up 0.5 meters. We need, to, I mean, sorry, 5 meters. We need to see how much he's going to use. So, initial velocity is still 10 because he only starts breaking now. His final velocity, because we want him to come to a standstill, is 0. He wants to stop the car. He hits the brakes to stop the car. The acceleration is negative 1.5, okay? And we want to know his displacement. We want to know, does he stop in the right time or the right displacement? So again, let's look at our equations. I'm going to write them down here. We've got VF equals VI plus A delta T, but we don't have the time, so we're going to cross that out. But we've got VF squared equals VI squared plus 2A delta X, and that one works perfectly, so we're going to use that. So VF squared equals VI squared plus 2A delta X. The final velocity is 0. The initial velocity is 10, but it's squared plus 2 times by minus 1.5 delta x. So therefore, this we take across, it's 100, we take across becomes a minus 100 is equal to minus 3 delta x. So the delta x is going to be minus 100 divided by minus 3. So our delta x equals 33.3 three meters. So he takes another 33.33 meters. So in total, in total, in total, he has traveled five meters during his thinking time plus the 33.33 meters, which equals 38.33 meters. So lucky for us, yes, Will the car hit the child? No, the child survives. Why? Because he had 50 meters and he only traveled 38.33 meters. But grade 10s, please make sure you understand this. Understand that you need to think about your thinking time and when your parents are driving or your friends, your older friends or whatever, and they're driving faster than they should and they're not leaving a good two second gap, explain to them nicely that you don't want to die today. Okay, please be careful. Thank you very much grade 10s. I hope that you've learned a lot about safety and you know and understand now why we need to leave a two-second gap. Have a great day.